You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. You wanted it. You got it. A radio program that helps teach you options trading inside and out. Basic to complex. This is Options Boot Camp. Whether you want to learn how to protect your portfolio, generate income, or even become a master of volatility, your Options Boot Camp drill instructors, Mark Longo and Dan Passarelli, will break it all down for you. Options Bootcamp is brought to you by Tasty Trade. Ready to shred your paper trades? Then trade at Tasty Trade, the broker that gives you what you need to make your own way. Get smarter every day with options education and research tools. Analyze your risks clearly with a potential profit and loss graph. Chart your way with hundreds of indicators. Make the numbers make sense and find the opportunities only you can see. Trade it with fewer clicks on an easy-to-use platform. Mobile, desktop, web. Supported by a trade desk with decades of combined experience. Stocks, options, futures, and more. You choose, you trade. Get what you need to make smart moves. Go to tastytrade.com slash pod to see for yourself, genius. Tasty Trade Incorporated is a registered broker-dealer and member of FINRA, NFA, and SIPC. Fall in boot. It's time to get into peak options trading shape. It's time for Options Boot Camp. All right, everybody. That music means we are back once again on Education Wednesday. Time to hold court for another fun episode of Options Boot Camp, what the cool kids call OBC. My name, of course, Mark Longo from the T-H-E optionsinsider.com as well as from the network upon which so many of you are mainlining out there these days so if you're tired of getting your options info from reddit or tiktok god forbid (laughs) from some kid who's never really traded options maybe longer than a couple of months you want to come to the pros well you came to the right place options boot camp uh we've been doing this for a little bit out here this show in and of itself has been running for over a decade so definitely one of the longest running if not the longest running options educational program on the planet out there. So a lot of fun to be had over here. Welcome. You made a good choice in the land of OBC. And then, of course, if you want to get additional content, got a lot available for you over there on theoptionsinsider.com slash pro, the place to go to learn more. Great pro Q&As. Congratulations to our winner we just picked in the last episode, John Beeser of our pro trading crate. You want to get your name in the hat for those awesome Pro Q&A sessions, as well as, of course, other exclusive shows like the old Options Oddities live stream. So whenever we're coming on the network, whatever content we've got going up, you guys can get access to it live. Send questions for the Pro Q&As, all sorts of fun. And, of course, great giveaways, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro. If you can't make the pro, but you do like what you hear, all we ask, you throw a like, a comment, a star, whatever your platform lets you do, wherever you're getting Options Bootcamp, it is available pretty much everywhere podcasts are available on the planet in some places you don't even think about podcasts like let's say audible or youtube it's available on all those platforms as well so wherever you're listening do whatever your platform lets you do in aggregate all of that does help new people continue to discover the content when they do discover the content unfortunately that means they also discover my cohort here the black hatted one himself mr dan passarelli from market taker mentoring mr p welcome back to the show how goes your festive holiday season sir 
Well, hello there, Mark. Uh, the festive holiday season, it is in full force. I'm I'm feeling festive already. And, you know, it's barely even snowed. We had a little bit of snow. Did it snow here? I was I was in Michigan yesterday when it was snowing. I don't know if it snowed here in Chicago, but yeah, holiday season. Oh, it's so nice. I was walking through the Chris Crindle market here in downtown Chicago this week, and it gave me vibes of your trip recently the pictures i saw from your trip to oktoberfest they had the beer hall everyone's walking around with mugs of ale and stuff so i felt like i was with you spiritually sir on your trip to oktoberfest and our listener what was his name uh ali john yeah ali john yeah so there you go any more festive holiday travel planned for you for the rest of the year sir oh what are we doing uh, yeah you know i mean i do have some trips planned um we're gonna head out to michigan again for uh new year's i'm gonna be in florida in january because once the holidays are over chicago freaking sucks until like the end of march so i'm gonna try and figure out some warm places to be when it's cold that sounds like a good plan. You know what else is a good plan, listeners? Like we said, if you like what you hear, throw some ratings, some stars. Uh, this week's five-star review came from Alex. Just Alex. No crazy handle this week. We like the crazy handles, too. Uh, he just says, Mark and the black hat guy. I like that. The black hat guy are the best. Sub for life. Ooh, sub for life. Well, you better watch out when you say that, Alex, because we know this show has been running for over a decade. This network's coming up on 17 years. So you might have a long run of subbing. Hopefully, you're in for that. And, Dan, how do you like being known forevermore? As the black hat guy. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you sound you sound super thrilled, as always, Mr. Dan. Uh, let's see if we can jazz Dan up, shall we, listeners? A little bit of the old options drills. Holy moot. Time for our favorite pastime, option drills. We're going to take the strategies learned during the show and teach you how they can be employed to achieve a specific objective. Do you hear me? Yes, sir! All right, everybody, welcome to Options Drills, the portion of the show where we break down some options concept or technique in a little bit more detail and explain some use cases, some moments when you may or may not want to utilize it in your own portfolio, as well as some fun tips and tricks. And today, keeping our series of options drill segments inspired by the MTM newsletter alive, at least for two, we got two of them now. <laughs> of course, if you're not checking out the MTM newsletter in between episodes of the show, you should go check it out. Another topic you guys broached recently, Dan, that we thought would make a, a fun little discussion point here on the old options drills is again it is the holiday season so everyone's talking about gift giving and indeed receiving and often sometimes giving or receiving of too much of one thing especially a good thing cannot be a good thing at the end of the day it's like it's like we're all reading the christmas carol all over again mr dan and you are scrooge mm. so uh, when mm. when sir is too much of a good thing not a good thing <laughs> well, funny you should ask, Mark. So <sighs> trading, uh, especially option trading, but trading in general, I guess is all about uh, risk management, right? Um, like I used to have a college professor uh, <laughs> who is this really quirky guy. He was a fairly conservative guy he would listen to, but he would listen to NPR every day because, you know, it was about as good a news source as you can get. Uh, but he used to refer to it as pink radio, uh, <laughs> even though he listened to it every day. Uh, so anyway, that was kind of funny. Uh, sorry. I guess he like to get angry at his radio every day, I suppose. Yeah, I guess so. So ramble, ramble, ramble. Um, anyway, so, and, and I mean, you hear people talk about this idea of risk. Oh, the reason why I brought that guy up is because um, we we're talking options and futures in college. Uh, actually, I think specifically options in college. And he was like, the options are the most capitalistic invention there's ever been. And the reason is because it's pure risk transfer. 
uh, you can use them to just get rid of your risk. Basically, you know, just pay a premium and your risk is gone. You own that put or whatever. Uh, you can that risk from that person who wants to get rid of it. It's just pure risk transfer. Um, and you profit based on the risk you take with your capital. Uh, and there's something kind of really cool about that concept. I still remember that. Uh, geez, man, I was in college a long time ago, so I don't mean to sound like one of these old people who bitches about how old they are. But uh, anyway, so <clears throat> all that said, oh, and you also hear people talk about this idea of risk. Like when the market's going up, you'll hear reporters say, oh, it's a risk on mood. Or when the market's going down, oh, it's a risk off mood. People are selling, you know, their stuff to get rid of risk. And so this is what us option traders do. We take high risk trades sometimes. We take low risk trades sometimes. Sometimes we specialize on one or the other. But really, I think the best traders have a couple of tools in their tool bo toolboxes, not just one. I've never met a, a trader who just got good at one thing and made a career out of it. Those one trick ponies, you know, don't last because all trades work until they don't work. So the best traders that I know have a few tools in their toolbox, a few different trades that they're good at. And when we have all very high risk trades, I mean, that can be kind of dangerous, uh, you know, especially if they're all positive delta or all negative delta or all positive vega or all negative vega. When we're all loaded up on sort of the same type of trade, and, and let's go with the high risk uh, trade scenario first, all my trades are really high risk. Well, I mean, if they don't work out, geez, like, you know, that's... Got a hunch, bet a bunch, hunch is wrong, bunch is gone, right? Uh, but the same can be said if we're all doing, if we're always doing just pure low risk trades, you know, like then you're not really employing enough capital to make any money doing it. So there's always got to be a little bit of a mix. And we're used to that when it comes to investing. People talk about diversifying their portfolio, which for, you know, just for buy and hold investors means like, let's get some tech stocks and some retail stocks, some cyclicals, some, you know, utilities, like different types of companies. And, oh yeah, let's have some bonds in there too. But when it comes to an option trading portfolio, diversification is a little bit of a different animal. Diver you know, like I said on, on our last show, if you caught that and you remember it, I said, you know, there's basically four things you can do with options. Get long implied volatility, short implied volatility, get long historical volatility or short historical volatility. And, you know, it can be directional with any of those also. But that's it. That's all you can do. And if all of your trades are all positive theta, and we were talking about this on the last show too, you know, if all you ever do is sell options, there's going to be that one time when the market as a whole just makes um, like a big black swan move and you're just going to get creamed that day. It's very good to have some high risk trades, some low risk trades. It's as well as some positive theta, some negative theta, positive vega, negative vega, positive delta, negative delta. You don't have to be portfolio flat, all your Greeks all the time, but um, you do want to have some diversification among the small handful of things you can diversify with options, basically theta, vega, and delta. There you go, listeners, a little bit of the old options drills. When too much, again, it's the holiday season. We're all kind of gorging on various things. Maybe it's a good time to stop and think, how much is too much? Especially if you're looking at your options portfolio, you can apply it there as well. You want a little bit of risk, but maybe not too much. You also don't want to play it too safe either because nothing fun happens there. Nice little mix, a nice little 
sampling of the various risk categories, the various Greeks, as Dan likes to talk about in all of his books, could go a long way. But you know what always goes a long way, listeners? Always lifts my spirits, makes everybody excited. It's that time of year. Let's bust out a little bit of the old holiday mail call. Mail call. Time to look at questions submitted by our listeners. All right, everybody, welcome to the mail call, the portion of the show where you folks take the reins, your questions, your comments, your insights, your pearls of wisdom. Let's start, Dan, by paying off some of our questions of the week. We just asked it on our show. Uh, It would be last week for us now, two weeks ago by the time the folks hear this on the on-demand side. Our question of the week, Dan, was, is it time for the Fed to revisit its 2% inflation target? I gave you three choices. Yes, it's too high. So you want the Fed to go lower with their inflation target. You think they're, they're too optimistic, perhaps, with their 2% level right now. Or yes, it's too low. They need to go higher. They're pumping the brakes on the economy too much. You want it to be higher. Or no, it's just right. It's the Goldilocks. And Dan, that ended up taking it in our audience poll, 53.3% saying 2%. You know what? It's just right. It suits them. The Fed doesn't need to change uh, 26.7% for yes, it's too high. So they actually want the inflation level the Fed gauges around to be lower, which that's kind of fascinating to me. I did not expect that to rank as highly as it did. And number three, yes, it's too low. I thought if anything was going to take it aside from the just right, it was going to be this. But no, came in a distant third with 20%. Dan, do those results surprise you the way they surprised me, sir? No, I don't know. I I think that that's probably a pr- pretty reasonable mix. I don't feel necessarily too surprised. Oh, and and you know, and by the way, to be clear, it used to be uh, pre two thousand twenty or two thousand twenty one that the target was under two percent. And then once inflation started looking like it was going to rear its head with the um, supply chains, they made the target 2%. And then everything just went to hell in a handbasket inflation-wise. And so now, is that what they say their target is now, 2% or under 2%? I'm not really sure. Um, But I don't know. I think if you're going to say it's too low – you you must be the people who own a lot of real estate uh, and or, you know, sitting on a lot of long commodities or you stocked up on massive amounts of canned goods and toilet paper. Like, I don't know, raising the inflation rate just means everything – raising the inflation target just means that everything has the propensity to get more expensive and the only people that helps are people who – own a lot of assets, uh, probably including and especially real estate. Yeah, I remember Powell and Company caused a bit of a dust up back in 2020. I think it was, uh, yeah, it was August of 2020 when they came out. I think probably words he probably wishes he could take back now and says they were going to let inflation run a little bit. Remember this? And oh, yeah. it always had been a target of 2%. But then and back in August of 2020, they said, you know, we're going to let it run a little bit. We're going to turn it to more of average inflation targeting. And the goal was to let inflation run a little bit to avoid cooling down the labor market and the economy. And maybe in the height of the pandemic, that could have made a modicum of sense. I didn't really agree with it at the time. And it instantly, you're right, blew up in their face. Inflation went out of control. (laughs) And ever since then, they've been saying, let's get inflation under control. So yeah, that one, I think if they had one to do over, I'm guessing that would be one of them. Maybe keep it on the quantitative easing as long as they did. Maybe, Maybe that one would be as well. But uh, there's a couple of things, uh, a couple of things they probably would like to have back if they could. But hey, wouldn't we all out there? Our question of the week this week, listeners, is getting away from the macro. It is the end of the year. We're recording this, listeners, now in the first week of December. You could be hearing this three days, three weeks, three years down the road. But right now, as we're recording this, the end of December 2023, it's the final month of the year. Time to break out your crystal ball. First up on the prognostication Level is volatility. Quite simply, where do you think VIX is going to close at the end of the year? Gave you four ranges to choose from, listeners. A north of 15, so we get a little vol pop towards the end of the year. Or about 13.5 to 14.99. Or we go down a little bit, 12 to about 13.5. Or below 12. And as we are recording this right now, Mr. 
Mr. Black Hatted one. We're having VIX right around 12 and three quarters. So that would put it in our zone three there, which is about where it was when we posted this poll earlier this week. Uh, Mr. Dan, uh, what is your vote if you have one? And then B, where do you think our audience is falling? Well, I do not have a crystal ball anymore. I had it removed. It was too hard to walk. Um, but I am going to say, where will the VIX close at the end of the year? Less than 12%, more than 15%. Um, I am going to go now one quick question here. And, uh, you know, we kind of have to qualify this. Are we talking about the close of business December 31st? Yes. Okay. The close of business December 31st, I'm going to go with under 12%. Under 12. Well, I guess th- I guess this year the actual last trading day would be uh, December 29th, Friday, December 29th. Not trading. The 31st falls on a Sunday this year. So, yeah, the last trading day of the year, whatever it is in our scenario. In this case, Dan, does that change your analysis at all? No, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to say under 12 and, and I'm going to say why I think that, um, because when we get like, that's going to be a Friday, I guess. Right. Uh, let's see here in January 29th, Friday, Friday, the 29th. Yes. Oh yeah. December 29th. So when we're going into, a, I mean, typically on Fridays, the VIX calculates out to appear lower. Um, especially going into a three day weekend and especially, especially because it's sort of a holiday weekend and volatilities tend to get a little cheaper around the holidays because there's a little bit less trading. Um, I'd be hard pressed to think of a situation where the market just sold off like mad during Christmas week. I'm sure it must've happened at some point, but I I actually don't remember it. So I think that there's just a lot of things that go in the favor of volatility naturally being lower to also calculating out lower because three days of theta are coming out of those options, which make the implied volatility appear lower. So, um, you know, I'm kind of gaming the system system a little bit. And yeah, I'm going to say under 12%. There you go, listeners. Under 12% is Dan's vote. What is your vote? Get out there, add options. Make your voice heard. If it is this week, of course, if you're listening this months or years down the road, get over to add options anyway, because your chances are there's another fun question of the week waiting there for you, as well as all sorts of fun content from throughout the rest of the network. Right now, Dan, it is 12 to 13 half, which is no surprise where VIX is hanging out right now. That is taking it with 41.3% of the vote, followed by... Above 15, so we got some ball poppers in here. Uh, 21.7% for number two. Then below 12, where you're hanging out, Dan, 19.6%. And bringing up the rear, uh, 13 half to 14.99, 17.4%. This one has two more days to run. Get out there, add options, listeners, uh, to make your voice heard. As we keep on rolling, let's see what else your voices have to say. Let's go out to, I guess it's just shush, S, three S's and three H's. <laughs> Pronounce it however you like, listeners. Uh, they want to know, uh, what are your guys' thoughts on how to approach earnings season when trading options? Is there a clear data-driven approach that works every cycle? Uh, well, first off, shush, welcome to the show. I'm guessing you're a newer listener. Because if you go through our archives, you'll see this is the topic we've tackled in depth Many times, going back to uh, July of 2021, episode 143, Navigating the Scary Waters of Earnings Season. Uh, We also have episode 149 from August of that year, Earnings Volatility. Then we have episode 170 from January of 2022. So it's been a recent fixation for the show. A lot of you folks obviously have it on the brain. Episode 170, Once More Unto the Earnings Breach. Get a little bit Shakespearean on the show, why not? And most recently, Episode 207 from October of 2022, so over a year ago. The Definitive Guide to Options Trading During Earnings Season. So make sure you check out all of those episodes for a much deeper dive than we're going to do here. And of course, we've already done it multiple times, so we won't belabor it here on the show. Except for a couple of interesting nuggets. You mentioned data-driven approach. If you do want earnings data, 
We do have it for you over there at the website. This is a, a problem we discovered years ago. People would hit us up all the time around earnings season on the site, on the network, and say, hey, what's going on with this name? Is it going to outperform its straddle? What is it pricing in? How has it performed in the past? And there was no great source for this information. There was one Goldman study from a couple of decades ago, I think now, and that was about it in terms of freely available earnings volatility and historical data. So we thought we'd create one for you. So we, we partnered with our buddy, uh, Mr. Matt over there from Orats has been on the show in the past. And they crunch all the numbers for you folks. And we put it out for free because we like you folks over there. Theoptionsinsider.com is the place to go. Click on the Options News and Articles tab to find all this data. And if you go out there, you'll see historical data going back many years. We've been doing this number of years now in a variety of different names. I'm looking at the earnings season report for this week right now, listeners, where we break down the entire earnings cycle by week, how many names are reporting that week, what in aggregate they're pricing in, and how well they performed compared to what they priced in. And right now, the season with 833 names reporting is hanging out at 117%. You might say, what does that mean? That just means 100% is if everything moved exactly as much as their straddle was pricing in. So obviously, 117 means outperformance is winning the day this cycle. And that's something we've noticed, a bit of a strong trend end of last cycle and throughout this one, is that names are pricing in a lot more juice this cycle, and they're actually hitting it. So that's been fascinating to watch. And that's not to say that's the trend every cycle. That's why you have to crunch the numbers. That's why you have to go read the data. The earnings season is a very much what have you done for me lately type of thing. But that said, there is data out there for you. And we do provide it for you because we like you folks completely for free. Now, if you're a sucker, you want to go out and pay some brokerage house to do, I think, a worse job of than what Matt and his team do for us and pay them a lot of money to do it, then by all means, have at it. But we like to at least arm you with some data. And I know, uh, Dan, this is a topic you folks tackle over there at MTM all the time. What do you have to say here for, what was it, just shush about uh, your thoughts on how to approach earnings season when trading options? Yeah, uh, I've had some one-on-one -on -one conversations with Matt about this. and um, Terrible guy, is he not? <laughs> dude, he is the freaking best. Um, so he and I have a very strongly overlapping Venn diagram on this, uh, though maybe our approaches are – actually, I think our approaches are a little bit similar too, a fairly big overlapping Venn diagram there too. Um, and, and I would say the answer is yes, there is a clear data-driven approach to use every cycle, and that is – our market takers total earnings domination uh, system and it is very very data driven like very data driven um it involves selling time spreads most of the time about 95 percent of the trades are selling times or no, no no buying time spreads rather um but not just willy-nilly only when certain criteria add up is when I buy those those time spreads. And basically, I created like a whole spreadsheet uh, with all this data on there that we go through and we look. And then it just becomes a very, very simple, yes, the trade fits criteria, buy the time spread, or no, the trade doesn't fit the criteria, don't buy the time spread. And that might be a time where we consider buying a straddle, but those uh, opportunities are few and far between and more often than not don't work. I still trade them because every now and then one of the ones that does work just leads to a massive profit opportunity. So uh, yes, to trade a data-driven approach, forget about trying to trade direction, that's a fool's errand. It's all about trading the volatility um term structure and yeah it works um right now i think when this goes live we're talking what is this uh probably the 20th or something in about in a couple of weeks we're actually going to be doing a class on it um every like the first half of january we're going to be doing a live training on it uh kind of introducing the total earnings domination system so um, if you're not already part of our community and on our email list to get our uh, online training invites, do that uh, because 
you know, shh, you're going to want to, you're definitely going to want to see that. You kind of threw me for a loop there for a second when you said you were selling uh, calendar spreads. I was like, whoa, this is, yeah. the, this is a new yeah. system. I need to check out this <laughs> system. <laughs> now you're going <laughs> hardcore, <laughs> sir. I, I can count on one hand the number of times people have talked about selling time spreads on this, and it's once, just now, when you said it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, man, Dan's really uh, really locked into some new formula. I got to figure see what this is. <laughs> but uh, good stuff there. Hey, speaking of formula and data, we were just talking about our buddy Matt. I just heard from our producers. He will be joining us for our double header next week. So you could say all that bad stuff you said about him to his face next week, Mr. Dan. Uh, maybe we'll have that big, uh, the whole covered call debate <laughs> we were talking about having between you and him for a while. He's been, he's been kind of, I won't say anti-covered call, but on one side of the fence. I know you've been, you've been a little bit more pro, so maybe we'll have a fun, a fun he said, she said on the show next week about all that kind of fun. So stay tuned for that, listeners. Should be a good time. But before we go, Mr. Dan, you kind of just mentioned cool goodies you got coming up in the land of MTM. If folks want to kick the tires for themselves, where should they go? What should they do? Yep. Join us. Markettaker.com. Markettaker.com. Yeah, that's it. There's no slash. Uh, go there. Two T's in a row. Go there. Click join free. Get on our uh, email list so that you get invitations to our live online trainings, webinars. And... Um, you know, if you if for anybody who's interested in earnings, we're going to have one coming up in just a couple of weeks. So get on it. Get on it. Get on it. Get on it over there at MTM. While you're at it, go check out our friends over there. Tastytrade.com slash pod, the place to go. See all their latest deals for all you cool podcasts. Listeners, kick the tires and light the fires. Tell them we sent you. They'll be happy to hear from you out there. And it does help support the show at the end of the day so we can keep cranking out more fun episodes for you folks course if you want to learn more theoptionsinsider.com slash pro and also a great place to go for all sorts of fun episodes all sorts of fun pro q and a's options oddities great giveaways and a whole bunch more it's a fun party fun little christmas gift maybe for you or for yourself or whatever holidays you celebrate out there at the end of the day it's a fun group you're gonna like hanging out with them i sure do and i have to hang out with them throughout the week listeners i am legally obligated you are not i think you're just gonna have a good time Nonetheless, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro, the place to go. That's going to do it for us on the network today. After this doubleheader, I get to give my voice a bit of a rest. Back again tomorrow on the network with the old option block with our buddy, the Flowmaster from the SIBO. And then after that, going to the Dark Side of Futures options, or this week in Futures options with everybody over there at CME Land. After that, on Friday, Volatility Views. You've been listening to this show for a while. I know a lot of you have made the jump to volatility views. You still listen to boot camp, obviously, but also want to learn a little bit more about volatility. So if that intrigues you, just subscribe to the whole network. It's all there. <laughs> but volatility views, if those things you talked about before, like VIX or the VXX or UVIX or UVXY or all these things, the volatility risk premium, like we talked about in the last week's episode, all these things are intriguing to you. Maybe you want to learn a new approach to trading. Volatility views could be the place for you. Then we're back again after that, exclusively for our pro folks with a little bit of the old options oddities. And then back again next week, all the way through to next Education Wednesday, another episode of Options Bootcamp. Stay safe out there, everybody. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the optionsinsider.com.